We read in the highlights, we are celebrating Pastor David and being here for 20 years. Yay! Woo! Whom shall I stand? Here I am, Lord. You have cried with us, you have laughed with us, you have walked with us. So thank you for 20 years. Good morning, everyone. I like that. Welcome to Bethel Congregational United Church of Christ. That don't know me, my name is Beth Astarte. I was the former program coordinator uh, here for a number of years, and today I get to be your liturgist on this very special day with a lot going on. So, yay! <laughs> Most importantly, as you've probably read in the highlights, we are celebrating Pastor David and being here for 20 years. Yay! Woo! <laughs> it's also World Communion Sunday, as you can see by the beautiful table that Mo and Nikki have put together. It's a time where we get to celebrate communion within the context of the global community of faith. So churches all over the world are celebrating communion today. We also have Reverend Linda Jaramillo with us today. She's a member of Ainsworth UCC. She's been with us before. She's also part of the wider church and has been actively involved in those for many years. And most importantly, she has journeyed with David for many of those years, which makes her like the perfect person to be here and celebrate with us today and to give today's sermon. <laughs> and last but not least, I'd like to draw everyone's attention to the beautiful chancel visuals today. They represent David's 20 years with us and they were created by Nancy McPherson. So thank you, Nancy, for your continued creativity. Good morning, everybody. Um, I wanted to give you a brief insider's description of the worship visuals this morning because we've got two for the price of one. We've got some new banners and also a different chancel table from last week. Um, first of all, the white and gold banners you see are a gift from Los Altos Methodist in California. Um, even though they're a different denomination, I kind of consider them a sister church, literally, because um, Kathy Thomas' twin Carol works there and attends there, and um, she also does visuals for their church. So we exchange photos and materials a lot. So they were cleaning out their closets, and Kathy said, we'll take them. So um, <laughs> now they're a part of our inventory. Um, Kathy's currently on the road. I think she's probably somewhere in... Colorado or so by now, um, but we did collaborate on today's design before she left. Um, as it happens, it's, as, as Beth said, it's not only Pastor Appreciation Sunday, but um, it's also World Communion Sunday, so we felt like it was a great time to use these new banners because they represent Christian cross symbols from around the world. Some are ancient and some are modern. Now let's see if I did this spatially correctly here. Um, the two banners used on the table are the Latin cross on the left with a higher horizontal bar and a Greek cross on the right that has equal length bars. And the cross on the pulpit is the Jerusalem cross. It uses a Greek cross and four smaller crosslets. Remember that word, crosslets? We'll come back to that in a minute. <laughs> um, these three crosses are pretty well known. Others may be less familiar to you as they were to me. But I tried to match up the designs the best I could to images that I found online. The Ankh cross above me has Egyptian origins, and in the back, what I think is called a Kolovrat sun cross is from the Nordic culture. And on your right on the front, I believe this is a modern version of a Celtic cross, also called a solar cross. The last one in the back, I had kind of a hard time finding an exact match for that one, but it was similar to some Ethiopian crosses that I saw that had a lot of weaving designs in them. Um, and it also shares some similarities to the Jerusalem cross, although it's a little more abstract. If you look closely, you can see the equidistant bars in the center and then the four smaller crosslets in each quadrant, except these crosslets are connected. So this design is sometimes called a cross, crosslet, crossed. 
So when that comes up on Final Jeopardy, you'll thank me. Okay, on to the table. This week I wanted to include items that would remind us just of, remind us of just a few of the unique things about Bethel that David has led us in or created over the years. Some activities were one-ofs or things we might not do anymore. Others are still with us, but I hope they all hold good memories for David and the rest of us, too. Um, the animals symbolize the blessing of the animal service. Uh, the flat David, when he went on his sabbatical and we shared in his summer of adventure. Uh, the sunflowers are because we give out sunflowers to our new members when they join Bethel, and David has obviously been very much a part of why we have new members. Um, the palms represent our traditional Palm Sunday procession into the sanctuary. And did you know that we save those palms, dry them, and burn them for the ashes we use for the following year's Ash Wednesday service? The stole with the children on it represents the inter intergenerational services that David created. And the bowl with the candles is a symbol of our very meaningful all Saints Day service coming soon in November. The rainbow flag is a symbol of da Bethel's extravagant welcome to all and also David's commitment to getting the West Side P Flag chapter started by volunteering Bethel as the original meeting place for the group. And finally, the mask. <laughs> COVID. You held us together. It was hard. But here we are on the other side, still, feeling, still healing but back together in person. What a joy. Who would have imagined that with the technology of Zooming and Facebook Live, we would be streaming our worship service to folks all over the globe? I only wish the table were bigger as there were so many ways that David has made Bethel the welcoming place that it is. On a personal note, I would like to thank you, David, for encouraging the worship committee to stretch creative, creatively as we try to bring meaning and joy to the weekly message with our visuals. You're the opposite of, well, we've always done it that way, mindset. <laughs> More often than not, you're urging us on with, let's try it, why not? And so we have spray painting revolutionary love on a brick wall of paper, sand bowls with sea glass floats to support a water theme, logs, branches, ferns, and rocks for our wilderness series table, sticky notes, river rocks, rainbows of organza fabric, and soon, our traditional fall harvest table filled with pumpkins and gourds. Mac and I joined Bethel in 2013, so technically I can only thank you for the last 10 years, but <laughs> I'm sure your starting 10 were just as great. So may I be the first of many today to say congratulations and we appreciate you as a pastor, a leader, and a friend. Thank you. So now let's, uh, thank you so much, Nancy. Let's take a deep breath together. And enter a spirit of worship, remembering that whoever you are and wherever you are in your journey of faith, you are welcome here. So now if you'll please stand with me and join in the call to worship. The whole world is in God's hands. Everything that lives and breathes, everything that simply is, everything. From the farthest spaces to the inmost places. God is with us and we are with God. Alleluia. As people of Christ gathered at table with our siblings around the world to remember whose we are, we shout, Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Join me in prayer. With all that we have, with all that we are, we worship you, God of all being. Bless this day, bless this time, bless this gathering, bless this world with your overflowing love. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Now please remain standing for the opening hymn.
Good morning. This morning's scripture, um, there's two. The first comes from the book of Psalm. It's chapter 133, verses one through three. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon, were, of, of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life evermore. And our second is from Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Gentile neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Well, what an opportunity to be here with you this morning on this very, very special day, the anniversary celebration a ministry with my friend and colleague. 20 years, wow, David, where did 20 years go, right? Well, when David and I talked in his planful way in July, we talked in July about, he invited me to come. I said, wow, it would be such an honor. And then we started talking about when that would be. And um, it just seemed right that we would co-celebrate World Communion together on this very special day, so thank you. And David, it's not lost on me that we're in the middle space between the first three and the second three parts of your fall sermon series, reclaiming our Christian DNA. I watched, I told you, and I listened. Brilliant, powerful messages. This one, I thank God for COVID that forced us to get the you know, the Facebook stuff going? I got to do that. <sighs> and as I delved into the scripture texts that you offered, and in her usual fashion, the spirit kind of got in the way and interrupted and drew me to another one. So there'll be a lot of scriptures, which I'll share in a minute. As I thought about it, it just seemed right. And it just seemed that this space and this time is more providential than coincidental. Will you pray with me? Aleluya, gloria, gloria a Dios. Dios me vida y mi corazón, aquí estamos otra vez en tu presencia. Te pido en este momento que nos enseñes tu amor tan fuerte que no podemos escondernos. Abre nuestros oídos y corazones, suelta nuestros espíritus. Bendiste estas palabras que sean guiadas por ti. Beloved, gracious God, the mother and father of all creation, God of abundant love, we seek your ever-present grace and blessing at this time. Cast your Holy Spirit upon us, be with us gathered here, open our hearts and our ears and release our spirits. And oh God, please bless these words that were prepared in your name and in the name you, of the one you sent to show us the way. Jesus the Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm really, really glad and very grateful for the seasons of the church are repeated every year. They're repeated every year, lest we pass them up or have them be almost unnoticed in, 
as sacred in our social context of capitalism and competition. I feel much the same on World Communion Sunday. Every year, we gather with global siblings from around the world, as you've heard, to celebrate and thank God to share la communion, the communion, as a demonstration of our oneness in Jesus. As an ongoing practice, World Communion Sunday, we're also in the middle space of the moment. The middle space, the space between the generations who have passed, the generations who have gone before us, and those who will follow us. We're in the middlers space between our ancestors and our descendants who may be reading something we said or something we did in a time yet to come. It is not unusual for liturgy wizards in a room, get in a room or in a Zoom somewhere and come up with scriptures for the offering to ground this annual communion of saints. Yes, saints, all of us saints. There are so many options to hear from the psalmists, the prophets, the gospel wizards, all of those, and those writers and wisdom leaders, those ancient words that bring music, poetry, inspiration, aspiration, stories of the past that ring into our today teaching, teaching for lessons that we might need to learn and listen to. So when we talk about this letter to the Galatians that Paul wrote, you know, there's still a little murmuring from those who doubt that the Apostle Paul actually wrote this letter. But the majority of scholars are convinced that indeed he did. That helps to know, at least helps me, because it puts the letter in a context of the first century time in which it was written. It was a time when the followers of Christ, the Christian movement, if you will, was highly influenced by, by Judaism, and it was connected to Judaism, even though more and more of them were Gentile. Paul self-identified as a missionary to the Gentiles. And the regions around Galatia were populated by, yes, Jewish converts, but non-religious converts, Gentiles, and lots of folks in between. They were wondering and wandering. The Jewish people, yes, had their distinct theology, and still do, and we honor that. They had their cultural traditions, and still do, and we honor that. And they had their laws. And they had their laws. So the real question before us in this letter is, where does the law of Moses and its requirement fit in Paul's message? to the followers of Jesus that he was preaching to. Yeah, I know there's always some disagreement and there was disagreement between Peter and Paul. You'll read it elsewhere, but that's another sermon. But these times in Galatia were troubled times. They were troubled with divisions among the believers, deep divisions about who was saved and who was not, who was blessed and who was not. Because those who opposed Paul contended that their faith in God requires obedience to the law and to cultural practices. Does any of that sound familiar? So Paul's not happy. Paul's not happy. To say that the gift of blessing and acceptance was contingent upon their willingness and ability to follow the law was a problem for him. Paul argues that the Galatians had been misguided. Rather than being subjected to the laws and the, as the heirs of Abraham, Paul emphasized that they should know that in Christ they already are children of God. Just as Abraham had placed his trust in God, the Galatians should trust God too. 
So what we have here in chapter 3, verses 26 through 28 actually, is a heated exchange between Paul and the rulers of the law. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now you remember I said that this letter is presumed to have been written in the first century, right? Well, dear Christians of ancient times, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If that was so then, and if it was so a thousand years ago, and was so 500 years ago, and so now, help me understand, dear Christians of our times, with a set of our own laws, how do we interpret this? There is neither slave nor Greek, nor free, nor male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Carla Swafford, professor of New Testament at Wesley Theological Seminary, says this about the laws in our culture, and I quote, the law can point toward goodness, justice, and peace, but it cannot create peaceable, loving, just people. The law is not in the business of transformation. Like David, I'm a firm believer in the separation of church and state that is required for all of us, not just some of us. Like the first century, these times are troubled with divisions among believers, deep divisions about who is saved and who is not, who are the insiders and who are the outsiders, who is blessed and who is not. Frankly, our hierarchical power pyramid is also based on the law, legally and illegally imposed practices. Reverend Dr. William Barber from the People's Campaign says it well. He says, and I quote, history tells us that prophets are called into action when religious culture is not working, end quote. In the midst of it all, dear ones, the magnificent prophet and blessed Savior Jesus was not only our Redeemer, he was our source of hope and is our source of hope. We are in the business of transformation. Our call is to transform despair to repair. We have what we need in our blessed scriptures, just like you, Amos 6, 8, a couple of weeks ago, that calls us to address the prevailing issues that threaten our common good and care for one another as human beings. We have many more that speak of our yearning for belonging, our yearning for connection. Let me tell you one. My dear friend and former colleague, the Reverend Dr. J. Bennett Guest, some of you know Ben, um, he and I got to journey together as we served as officers of the United Church of Christ eight years ago now, today. And Ben was a very creative individual. Well, Ben preached a sermon in the beautiful Amistad Chapel that was on the first floor of the former national headquarters of, in Cleveland, where they used to be. Oh, did I say Ben's an amazing preacher too? Well, the year was 2011, okay? And Ben's sermon focused on the scripture from the 17th chapter of John. John's gospel, we hear Jesus say this, beginning with the 10th, 10th verse. All I have is yours. Jesus is talking to God. All I have is yours and all you have is mine. And the glory has come to me through them. And I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy One, protect them by the power of your name and the name you gave me, so that they may be one just as we are one. Jesus in his prayer is appealing to God of all creation. Protect them in your name and in my name so that they may be one just as we are one. 
And you know, the message does a little different translation, which I thought was cool. So that they have, can be of one heart and mind, just as we are of one heart and mind. Ben shared in his sermon that when he met somebody new, or usually as we lived our life at that time, was sitting next to him on an airplane, and he was often asked, hello, what's your name, what do you do? And more specifically, what business are you in? You know, that happens, right? He thought long and hard and wondering how he might respond. Always worried and wondering how that might be interpreted as a minister, Christian minister. He came up with a response provoked by the United Church of Christ slogan that says that they may all be one. He declared, following that time, to anyone who asked him, I am and we are in the business of oneness. Being clear that oneness is not sameness, as individuals we are distinct, together practicing oneness. It wasn't much later that Ben and his way came to us, the officers of the church, with an idea and was full of ideas. As I said, it was the year 2011, right? Well, the light came on for Ben when he realized that on November 1st, if we write our abbreviated fashion, it would be 11 right? And then going on to November 11th, it would be 11 11 11 One's galore, right? So it was especially attractive because we as a denomination celebrate and struggle with the oneness that we seek by allowing often our autonomy to get in the way of our covenant. Does anybody remember the United Church of Christ Mission One campaign? Okay, well, I'm gonna have to tell you then. The Mission One campaign was 11 days of oneness in practice. It was a shared mission. Our congregations, our conferences, UCC-related seminaries, colleges, and human service agencies teamed up and said yes to live into our business of oneness. We shared prayers, we had worship services, we had works of compassion all over the country and all over the world. Our generous spirits were alive, and we did lots of justice action in 11 days together. All of this grounded in our foundational Christ invoked message of John 17 of oneness. Responses were overwhelming. It gave everyone who participated great satisfaction in knowing that tens of thousands of people benefited. Yes, we were challenged but also changed by this process of togetherness. The Cleveland Plain Dealer was so intrigued that they interviewed Ben. And here's what he said to them, and I quote, in the UCC, we're in the oneness business. We bank our future on it. We don't sell shoes or pedal pots and pans. We offer no soaps or salves no magic potions, good luck charms, or prayed over trinkets. The only thing we market is the belief in a still speaking God, one who is made known in our will and work for oneness, unity without uniformity. And so in the spirit of oneness, it is right to celebrate World Communion Sunday on this day the universal message in many names of a magnificent God, the divine greatness, is one of love, concern, and companionship for the common good of all living things. In the spirit of oneness, it is also right to recognize your pastor who practices mutuality, solidarity, and companionship all the time, regularly. 
It is right to give thanks to you, the Reverend David Randall Bodman, for listening to the call of ministry 35 years ago and faithfully leading with love as a pastor, a teacher, and a prophet, courageously creating safe and brave space for claiming the scriptures as the guide. I do hope and pray that this fall sermon series, Claiming Our Christian DNA, is heard far and wide. A message that we need to hear, and we need to have the words to share it. It is right to appreciate you for leading this faithful community of saints that we know as Bethel Congregational United Church of Christ. And it is in the spirit of oneness that let us remove the boulder that blocks our path and open the way toward transformational grace that is offered without conditions or laws. Let us together forge a path that guides us toward healing and reconciling love without limits. And so we give thanks for all who are gathered here, especially for you, David, we give thanks that we are together on the way. May it be so. Amen. I ask that you would join me in a moment of silence, and then we'll have a pastoral prayer, and then end with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are so thankful for your presence here, for the ways in which that you help us all remember that we truly are one. We are grateful for pastors that hear the call and answer the call, and in particular for David and his 20 years of service to Bethel. We're grateful for this congregation of saints for the family and friends and laughter that we have in our lives, and for this beautiful planet you have given us to live on, the beautiful changing seasons, the changing leaves and the trees, and even the changing weather when it goes from rain to sun. And in the midst of the fall and the changing seasons. We have also experienced loss within our community. And we ask that you continue to be with us and walk with us as, wa as we walk with each other in the grief of losing beloved members of our congregation, Wendell Pike, Kathy McCullough, and also the loved ones of family and friends. Any grief that anyone is feeling today, we know that you are here and that you provide that peace that passes all understanding. We ask that you be with those that are struggling with illness in our congregation. Continue to be with them, lift them up. Help us all to Hear those nudges when a phone call is needed or a card is needed. We ask that you continue to be with all of those that have experienced natural disasters in the last few months. And there have been a lot. Or one moment they had a home and the next moment they don't. And it's happening all over the world. And we know that you're there and you're in the midst. You're with the people on Maui. You're with the people in Morocco. You're with the people on the East Coast and West Coast. And 
And we ask that you continue, as we ask for wisdom for ourselves, we ask that you be with the leaders of our country and give them wisdom. to lead with kindness and to move into unity, remembering that we're all one and what happens to one really does affect all of us. And we know that there are times where the prayers of our hearts are so raw and so deep that there really are no words, but we know that you hear those silent prayers of our hearts. And we ask that you wrap your love around all of those in need of your special comfort today, reminding them that they are not alone, that we are part of a community and a community of faith. And as The disciples asked, how do we pray? Jesus gave a prayer that reminds us how we are all connected. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Before I begin the Liturgy of Communion, just a, a word of thanks to all of you and to my good friend, Linda, and all of the congregations and communities and people uh, who have supported me and encouraged me to say, here I am, Lord. Amen. I also forgot my reading glasses. I'll hold it out here. So, so it's going to look like an old man, but at least I can well, read it. We're in it together. We are. <laughs> Wherever you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And this includes our friends who may be um, joining us via Zoom um, or Facebook. And if you have some elements to gather together for communion, we would invite you to join us from your homes. And we're invited to this table of remembrance, healing, promise, and hope. This table is filled with breads of many cultures in honor of our neighbors near and far. And as is our custom, when we complete the words of the liturgy, we'll invite you to come forward and partake of this beautiful bread and the cup. As we prepare ourselves to partake of this holy meal, Healing God, we come before you broken, yet seeking wholeness, isolated, yet seeking community, overwhelmed, yet seeking simplicity. God, we yearn for the healing you promise. God, God of justice, we come before you selfish, yet seeking a generous heart, arrogant, yet seeking humility responsible for injustices, yet seeking forgiveness. God, we yearn for the justice you promise. God of hope, we come before you afraid, yet seeking assurance, agitated, yet seeking serenity, angry, yet seeking a forgiving heart. God, we yearn for your peace, the peace you promise. This we pray to Jesus the Christ, who is our hope. Pray with me. Loving and gracious God, who summons galaxies into being, we give thanks and blessings to you. We bless you for the diversity of our planet that amazes us. We give you thanks for the multiplicity of humanity with our complexities of color and culture, yet called into oneness of being through Christ. With many tongues, yet with one voice we honor you. Loving and gracious God, who surrounds all creation with abundant love, we give thanks and blessings to you. We bless you for your love made known to us through Jesus which reassures and reconciles us to you, to ourselves, and to one another. As Christ is our light to you, may we be light to others. In Jesus' name we pray and say together, Amen. Amen. They were gathered. They were gathered around him in that room centuries ago. They were gathered, and I believe it was women, and men, and children, and elders, they were gathered together. As we gather in many rooms across this nation and across the world, we come. People of many places and cultures, of many ages, races, genders, and abilities, we gather in remembrance of that sacred space where Jesus gathered them. If you are joining virtually and have the elements near you, receive them. If you do not have them, receive the Spirit. And so in that moment, as they were gathered, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and said, take all of you and receive this in the spirit in which it is shared. And every time you do it, remember me.
And then he shared the cup. And I don't know what the words say, but I think I know. I, you know how to do this. I think I know how to do this. <laughs> he took a cup. By the way, Linda wrote this liturgy, which is why it's so beautiful. But Jesus, with his friends, old and young, probably gay and straight, whether they knew it or not. Children, people maybe who couldn't even speak or walk. And yet he offered this cup and said, this is a cup of a new covenant. And as often as you drink of it, remember me and act and do as I have shown you. For this is the good news of God's love, which is for all people. May this blessing be with you receive this as our covenant with Jesus the Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Creative and connecting God, you have sent your spirit and made us the body of Christ. God of all, send your spirit to this place so that those gathered here in this sacred moment may know your presence. As we eat the bread and drink of the cup, make us one with the saints and with our siblings of faith throughout this nation and all around the world. Be with us, God, not only now, but in every moment of our lives. Help us to turn hostility into hospitality. Help us to turn greed into generosity. Help us to turn lamentation into liberation. And help us to turn woundedness into sacredness. Help us to know you. We give you thanks for your healing grace. We give you thanks for Jesus the Christ, who is our hope. We give you thanks for the Holy Spirit that is our power, now and forever. And the, and the people, people said, said Amen. Amen. Now we come to the time in our service where we have an opportunity to give. As we know, a vibrant ministry is more than just the pastor. It involves all of you. So today we have multiple ways to partner with God and with one another to practice giving from an open and joy-filled heart. So we have the opportunity to participate in one of the wider UCC church offerings, Neighbor in, Neighbors in Need. This year the theme is Behold and focuses on environmental justice, all the ways in which we can be better stewards of the beautiful planet that we have. As a reminder, one-third of the offering of Neighbors in Need supports the Council for American Indian Ministries, and two-thirds are used by the Justice and Witness Ministries to provide grants to support a variety of justice initiatives, advocacy efforts, and direct service projects. And as Linda, Reverend Linda shared with me this morning, it's really one of the main sources of income for Justice and ministry, uh, Witness Ministries at the UCC level. So the envelopes for the special offering can be found by both the doors, or you can write NIN for Neighbors in Need on your check or on the envelope in the pew and put your offering in it and then just leave it in the plate on the way out. And then of course we have the opportunity to support Bethel's vibrant ministry. Um, if for, I know many people give online. Um, you can also put your offering in one of the offering trays on the way out by the door. You can write a check. You can donate online by pushing the Give button on the website. Just lots of ways to show your support of this wonderful community. 
So if you will join me now as we say the prayer of dedication together. Like the disciples, oops, is it not up yet? Now it is, okay, let's try that again. <laughs> like the disciples at Emmaus, we offer what we have. They offered their company, their table, their bread. We invite you to be with us as we offer you our love, our devotion, these gifts. May our eyes be open to your holy presence, now and always. Amen. So I'd like to invite Mo Manley Smith to come forward to, uh, she's got some special, specialness to do. <laughs> so first, I want to say thank you for for God for calling you here to Bethel. I think it was John Bentley that went and got you <laughs> and came and brought you here, but God is the one that sent him. So first, we want to thank God for um, bringing you here to Bethel and for you being um, listening to the voice of God and coming here. Um, for being with us, you have cried with us, you have laughed with us, you have walked with us. So thank you for 20 years. And I, I mean, yes, it's selfish for me to say 20 more years, but I will say and I will put it out there into the universe for that. So we do have a few um, trinkets to give you. First, Beth, can I borrow you for a second, please? <laughs> so, this is a stole that Janice, um, unfortunately she's not here with us today, but this is a stole that Janice sold for our pastor. <clears throat> and she wanted to give it to you. Janice Burrows. And it represents Yes, different things that's about you. Um, so um, it has different um, sessions that represents things about you. Um, I'm not sure that everybody can see, but it has grace abounds. So we know that it was a favorite saying from my pastor. Um, the color is his favorite color. <laughs> and um, so it just had different um, sections that represents things about you. So that is from Janice Burrs. Um, this here is from Bethel, so I'll let you kind of open it up. Um, it is a kind of what we call a picture album, but it's different cards from different people here. I'm just going to make a mess. Go ahead no. And, make a mess <laughs> oh, wow. and um, it's just people saying thank you and um, giving their gratitude to you. Um, just letting you know what you meant to them over the years. And um, it's still spaces in here, so if you didn't get a chance to write in it, we have cards that in the back of the fellowship, doing fellowship hour, and everybody here is um, welcome to come to fellowship because we have more than enough food. If you know my wife, you know we have more than enough food. So everybody is welcome for fellowship hour. Um, and it's cards that's going to be back on the gift table. So if you have anything that you would like to drop in a basket on, um, in the back of the fellowship, um, we have a basket back there that you can drop in the basket for our pastor. Um, but you can write, and then we can add to this album just to let you know um, what we think for you and how much we love you. So we want to let you know that we do love you. So thank you so much. So if you can go and take a seat. We also going to take a moment and show a wonderful video. So because the pandemic, yes, it did bring us some off the wall things. It brought us some wonderful things, which was virtual church. So we have a wonderful video that we're going to show some people that cannot always make it to church. Give me one second. <laughs> people that can't always make it to church, they want, they want it to take a moment and tell you how much they do love you and count of what you do mean to them. So now you can roll this. <laughs> Greetings from Creekside Village, David. I uh, want to wish you 
happy anniversary for the 20 years that you've been at Bethel. I remember so well when you were called and how happy we were. And you've been the perfect fit for what we needed at Bethel to take us to become an open and inclusive, friendly, outgiving church like it is today. I'm so proud of my church and you've been perfect there. You helped me a lot when my husband died. I wanted to thank you so much now that I'm 92 that I can go to church every Sunday morning right here in my home with the Zoom that you've all set up. Liz and her filming. And, uh, I It means so much to me to be there every Sunday morning. And, and surprisingly, I feel like I'm in church. And I sing along and laugh along and and do, do the whole service with you every Sunday. I don't know what we'd do without you, David. We're, you're really special to all of us. And I want to welcome you home from your vacation. I hope to see you soon in person and give you a big hug. Congratulations again. 20 years. As a child, when my parents said those words, I remember 20 years ago, yada, yada, I thought, oh, wow, if you can say that, you're truly old. <laughs> but for you, David, those 20 years are measured not in the gray in your hair or the ache in your joints, but in the lives that you've touched, the people you've called friend and have been nurtured by you in such loving and caring ways. For example, I remember well the day you introduced the congregation to newborn Alexander Green. I actually cried because it was such a heartfelt, tender moment, a demonstration of community love that I had never experienced in a church before. And that's when I knew I wanted to be part of Bethel. I thank you for those memories. I also thank you for the same caring relationship with two Bethel members who were closest to me, Winifred Hershaft, who considered you a best friend, and to my husband, Rick, who needed a spiritual advisor as his overwhelming um, will to live gave way to acknowledging that his battle was lost and then coming to terms with that. You made such a difference in our lives and the lives of so many others. Happy anniversary, Reverend David, and thank you. Hi, David. Unbelievable how fast 20 years goes. I remember John Bentley coming up with this guy on a Saturday morning at Habitat Workday. And we're so happy you came. You've done so much for us since you've been here. Thank you, and we wish you the best in your next 20 years and more. We hope it's been a good time for you, too, and, and God bless you. I would just second everything that Bob just said about David, and we've enjoyed your time with us, and uh, wish you the best in the next 20 years. It's the first thing I remember about David Randall Bodman. He was very concerned about turning his back to the congregation because his bald spot would show. Either it demonstrated a sense of humor or a little bit of an ego between the Randall Bodmans and the Thomases. We raised three Labrador Retrievers and one Golden. It was just a fun and deep deep friendship. It's been enjoyable having David here for 20 years. And first thing, it was always nice when he talked about his family and his boys. And it was fun, we lived with the boys and grew up with the boys from school and then going to college. And now they're professionals and they're doing well. And it was uh, so great to see. I was hospitalized a couple of times and he came to the hospital and it really helped me. He always enjoyed when we brought the Christmas trees in. I've given David the motorcycle lecture a hundred times. He's never listened to it. I get great joy when I'm able to, to go fast and also be just a tiny bit safe. <laughs> and that day that he took off for Alaska, I was standing right there with this whole crowd of people and we all waved. 
And Lordy, Lordy, I said to myself, I hope he comes back alive. <laughs> and uh, he did come back alive. That's the most important thing. I, you know the rest of the story. Hi, David. Congratulations on your 20 years with uh, Bethel. That's a big chunk of your work in life. And I know you poured your heart and soul into that congregation. I think that transition you made during uh, when Bethel was in the pandemic um, and your commitment to it, you're a great reformer, appreciate your sense of humor, and especially that time we had together up in Alaska on your 40 days and 40 nights on a motorcycle on uh, your journey inward and outward uh, during that time. And then I think the last thing I want to say is just your commitment to your family, to your church, and to pushing hard ideas. Uh, I think that's really important to have a reformer like you um, initiating hard conversations and making people think about things that are hard. Surprise! Hey, DRB, my brother from Maine, this is your gal, Cinta, and I just want to say congratulations and happy anniversary on reaching your 20-year milestone at Bethel. Now it's time to celebrate, so give me a call so we can go have a toast. Hey, David, congratulations on 20 years of ministry. What a joy for you and for Bethel. I've so enjoyed uh, working with you these last 13 years while I've been at Lake Oswego UCC. I so appreciate your friendship and your colleagueship, and especially have loved the times when we've been able to offer joint confirmation classes. Uh, I so appreciate your spirit with our youth, um, your ability to take all these concepts from our faith and make them resonant for our young people, and uh, just enjoy the fun of being creative and collaborative with you. Uh, I also totally admire your ability to drive a passenger van full of teenagers over a snowy pass as well. So anyway, I just wish you well uh, in the next 20 years, and I'm so grateful uh, to have been able to share so many of these years with you. Blessings, David. David, do you remember the first week that you were here? How you came to look for Dave, my Dave? And you went up to the Veterans Hospital tried to find your way around, and when you got there, he wasn't there, he was at home. So then you came to the house. You'd never met my Dave before. You sat on the bed with him. You asked him, the first thing you asked him was, what would you like me to get you? And my Dave said, you're from Colorado? I'd like a Coors beer. Remember your answer? <laughs> I'd like one too. <laughs> <laughs> you helped our family get through this week. And of course you did the first memorial service two weeks later. Hello, David. I just want to say congratulations on reaching this wonderful milestone of 20 years at Bethel. And I want to share my thanks to you for being so generous with your time when Rodney was so sick and spending time with us. I think that is a wonderful thing to do, and you are very good at it. And I appreciate every hour you spent with us. Hi, David. It's Nancy, and I'm being in, interviewed uh, out here in my in my bank's home. I can remember when you came to the church 20 years ago. I was just newly out of surgery for cataract surgery, and I can remember that I was concerned about how things were going to go and so on. But we've had a good relationship over the last 20 years, and and things are going well at the church and for you too. There's been a lot of changes in my life, moving away from Beaverton and losing Homer. I'm congratulating you on being with Bethel for 20 years and have a great rest of your time at Bethel and we'll see you when we see you. Congratulations, David. We're so happy that you 
chose to come to Bethel. You've been such a fantastic minister for us, and we have been involved in the community. That makes me really happy because the community is what brings everybody together. And you definitely have made that happen. And people who are coming and visiting Bethel are finding you a very welcoming minister. And that makes me happy as well. Wendell and I have, you know, have been part of Bethel for many, many years. Um, married 65 years ago in the church and grew up in the church as kids. So we've been part of Bethel for many, many years and I wouldn't trade it for anything. And your leadership continues to make it the church of Beaverton. So thank you, David. Enjoy everything that you have and we're just blessed to have you. Thank you for your leadership. Go fast. Well, I'm just overwhelmed, to be honest with you. It's what a, what a wonderful tribute from those of you who have, been, have gathered here and those who've gathered through this technology. And I don't know who put it all together, but I'm very grateful um, for that. What a, just a tremendous gift. So I am, I am so blessed to have been here for 20 years. Uh, I'm not sure I've got another 20 years in the tank for active ministry, but uh, I hope to be around for 20 years anyway. And I want you to look around at the people who are here and make eye contact with somebody because it's important to know that the spirit of life and love is alive in our eyes and in our hearts, helping us to make decisions that will make the world a kinder, gentler, more compassionate place. And you are the tools that God can use to make that so. So know that you are loved beyond your wildest imagination and it will continue no matter what. And the people were heard to say, Amen. Actually, this is where we listen to Chad play a beautiful postlude on the piano. Today, you get the band. to be like 